today. I've been a fan since he first popped up in the public eye years ago uh, selling his My Pillows. It's Mike Lindell. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. Look at this. Hello, Hello guys. Hey, how are hey. you? How are you? I got to say, I, I, I've been a huge fan for uh, for quite a while. You're quite the personality for a CEO. Your commercials are very entertaining. Uh, and it's good to have you on the show. Well, thanks. We do all our own commercials. I uh, I always try and make it real. Yeah, you do. You do. It's uh, they, they remind me of... Uh, nostalgia of uh, some of the older commercials I remember growing up with, and uh, those were, you know, Crazy Eddie, things like that, which, uh, right. you know, made you laugh a little bit. It's funny. You, you show up in the uh, medicine cabinet like <laughs> one of the old uh, high guy commercials. Remember right. that one? I think yeah, it was kind, absolutely. It's kind of based yeah, on that you know, high guy. Yeah, you know what's funny is I when I started doing these, the first commercial I did was an infomercial in 2011, and and we had like five employees and and I went to do this infomercial and they go, you need to have an actor and um, you know, you need to have this. And I go, Can't, I just want a real audience, just me and a friend of mine. And the night before this real producer came in and he go, he's texting the other guy. We were doing our reads. He said, this is the worst guy I've ever seen. He'll <laughs> never make it on TV. And then as we, you know, this big producers just kept telling me, you know, this is hokey. You're going to fail. And it's and. And, uh, you know, they were wrong. <laughs> it was they, it's amazing. Yeah. They certainly were wrong. You're a, a juggernaut as far as uh, uh, the, these pillows go. I own two of them myself. I actually just bought one. And I, I got to really tell you, and this is no commercial. <laughs> I swear, I love it. I don't like when another pillow kind of works its way I into my <laughs> circle. I'm like, where's the my pillow? They honestly, I I thought it was, I thought it couldn't be possible that they do stay cooler because it's like the room is whatever temperature it is. It can't be cooler or what. But damn it, if those things don't stay cooler, then a regular <laughs> stupid feather pillow. I don't know yeah. how you do it, Mike. You want the cool side. Yes. When I when I invented it they, uh, back in 2004, my friends, you know, I was I used to be a crack cocaine addict. And I was going to ask, like, were you trying to get comfortable one night uh, on the street? They, they, <laughs> they asked me at the, on uh, the paparazzi once in New York. They go, "You were a crack addict," and they go, "How do you invent a pillow?" I said, "Well, when I did get sleep, it was quality. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it was rare, but it was good." <laughs> yeah, but we. Uh, but when I went to invent it, all my friends laughed at me and they're going, you know, Mike's going to invent a pillow, you know, and they're going, what is he on crack? You know, you know, it was, but, they, uh, but you know, it was, uh, and, and then the other half would say, you know, Mike, uh, if you come up with something, I really want it. Cause there were so many problems with pillows, the whole industry sleep isn't about firmness or soft. It's about adjustable height to keep your neck level at night. And, and when I started out, you know, here's a pillow for $69 back in 2005, people at home shows and fairs, they're going, uh, pillows don't work. What are you doing? And, uh, but then as I started selling them and they, and people would come up the next day and go, this pillow is the best, not pillow, the best product I've ever bought. And that made me feel good. It wasn't about the money. It was helping people. And, and I think that's what my pillow's gotten so big is word of mouth. We've sold 43 million pillows, but Jeez. only, to, only to 9 million people. So uh -huh. that was told everybody else, you know? Yeah, it's it's one of those things. You you get one, you you buy two, maybe three. You have yeah, a couple you of people, your, your family. Sleep, yeah, sleep affects everything you do. You know, you don't want if someone's crabby. You say, "What? You wake up on the wrong side of the bed and stuff like that." You know, people are buying them for their neighbors, so they don't have crabby neighbors. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to ask you about uh, how you you got out of that world of of addiction and uh, and uh, being destitute like that and and. and well, Working your way up to to yeah. who and what you do now is an amazing story. What was what was that turning point where you were just like? Yeah, what was your bottom? Yeah, your I got it. I got to well, do something hey, or die. You know, I was uh, I was a very functioning cocaine addict for twenty years, and I, and you know, it was back when. Uh, you know, I couldn't talk to people. I was I come from a divorced family when divorces weren't common. And I, you know, I think childhood fatherlessness and trauma and and things that happen in your childhood can manif manifest into addictions. And mine was I was a very functioning cocaine addict. I had 20 years. I was married 20 years, had a, raised a family. And and, to, and then it all switched to crack into the year 2000. And 
by by the time 2009 came, I had lost the marriage. I had people taking my pillow, the company, um, and there was only five, ten employees. But they, uh, um, my me and my kids and stuff. But all this, you know, the the pillow was just a little pulse, and you know, the heartbeat that would show up about every two months, and 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 it got to be even my drug dealers did an intervention in this in the uh, spring <laughs> of 2009 fuck. or 2008. The, I had been up 14 days, and my drug dealers, I, I was in the streets of Minneapolis. I came came upstairs, and I go, what are you guys doing? And they were the three of the biggest dealers that controlled the, the part of the city. And I said, and they didn't know each other, but they knew of each other. And I said, what, what's going on here? They go, we're cutting you off. You've been up for 14 days. And and I go, and I'm arguing, saying it was only 12. And, and the one dealer <laughs> leaves, and the other... The other one went down to the streets. Well, he asked me how much crack I had left. It was just a few rocks, and they, and he I, he tried to wait me out. Well, he fell asleep, and I was out. And I went down to the streets. And I couldn't find it anywhere. Wow. Uh, nobody would sell it to me. Nobody would sell me cr- crack. I mean, I'm offering people a hundred dollars for five dollars worth. I came back upstairs, and this is in this was an hour later, 3 a.m. And the and the dealer's sitting up waiting for me. He goes, "How'd that work out for you?" And he goes, "Give me your camera." Or, or give me your phone. And he says, I'm going to take a picture of you. He says, you've been telling us for years that this pillow is just a platform for God. And you're going to come back and help us all someday out of this addiction we live in. And and which I would tell him that all the time. And he took that picture. And that's on the cover of my book. It actually goes from a hologram to where I was then and to where I'm in now. Wow. Well, yeah. a, year, a year later, I quit everything overnight. It was when you talk about bottoms. Um, I, I knew the pillow was a platform for God, a much bigger thing that, uh, than just selling pillows. And and I knew that day that my calling was going to be gone. You know, I made sure I didn't have any money and made sure that, you know, your typical bottom. And, and, uh, and I wanted to show, you know, with God, all things are possible. And I'm thinking that was almost a challenge to me. But I did. I woke up the next day. And I said, I said a prayer. I said, I want to wake up in the morning and never have these addictions again. The desire. I woke up the next day and the desires were gone. Now, I did a couple of months later, went to a faith-based treatment center. You got your Teen Challenge, Salvation Army, these type of things. I went to one by my church and I learned why I was addicted in the first place. But they, um, but anyway, those two years then, right after that, I had to get my... Uh, I had to get my company back. They, these guys had copied me and everything and start getting my life back together. One week later, I had to borrow 30 grand from these guys that didn't know me. They were all wearing suits, which they scared, you know, suits scared me back then. And uh, anybody that ate with more than two forks. And and I uh, I walked in, I needed 30 grand to get my company back from these corrupt guys. And anyway, I walked in and there was eight of them. There was a CIO, a CIEIO, all these C's. And I'm going, and I'm just wearing a T-shirt and carrying a pillow. And I said, yeah, this, I used to, I had this comp, or I had this company, this invention of this pillow. And these guys took my company and I need, I need some money to get my fabric back. I need $30,000 to buy it back from them. And uh, I used to be a crack cocaine addict and I'm going wow. on and on. And the CEO says, well, when did you quit crack? And I said, last Thursday. <laughs> and and four, four of them got up and left the room and then four of them stayed and they end up giving me the money. Now, what happened then, wow. you, got, you get all the way up to um, um, when I launched that first infomercial on October 7, 2011, my friends and family, we all pooled our money. I said, if nobody's going to take us. If no one's going to take us, no box stores, nobody will take us. And I had done shows now for seven years and and across the country carrying pillows and making them in the day. It's our night selling them during the day. And I said, let's do an infomercial. Well, I didn't know most infomercials don't work. And I had this dream and I wanted to make it real. And so even my kids, we all pooled our money and we made this infomercial in October 7, 2011. It launched. I was living in my sister's basement at three in the morning and it came on TV and I go, wow, this, it seemed, it's exactly what I wanted. And, <laughs> and it just exploded. We went from five employees to 540 days. Wow. And they go, they go, Mike, you need to be CEO. I go, why do I want to be a CEO? And they go, we need an HR, we need an HR department. I go, I definitely don't want that. Uh, <laughs> no we, way. Need, yeah. we need a corporate attorney. I go, that sounds horrible. I just want to make pillows and sell. <laughs> and, uh, so they, uh, but you know, then it just, um, we were, you know, we there were mistakes I made I, in 2012. We got so big so fast that companies took advantage of me, and and uh, I learned from that. And I got, I picked myself back up and learned from it. And uh, 
and uh, corrected it. And then uh, we started doing one and two minute commercials. With, and after 14, we took over all our radio. We do, I do, we do everything ourselves. I have my own, my own call center, wow. my own manufacturing, my own, you know, we have over 1500 employees and we're all like a big family. And the things I didn't like when I used to work for someone, I hire people, give them second chances. And, and uh, it's just, uh, it's been amazing now having us. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's that's kind of like what we do here. We give people second chances. That's <laughs> that have been booted off of regular radio. They are welcome here. I'll, I got to tell you one thing, Mike. You sure talk like you're still on crack. Yes. Yeah, everyone says that. Okay. I can't imagine I can you on crack. coke. Crack's, Holy crack's, shit. Yeah, crack's a, very, crack's a very paranoid drug. Cocaine, I could talk. One of the things I could never talk, I could never public speak. I, I had a fear of talking to people. Wow. And, and I was either that. I would show off. You can't get rejected if you don't uh, if you don't um, talk to people. And uh, you know, I got uh, I got set free of all that. You know, when I got when I found Jesus, and I and I'm telling you, it was like now I can go out and talk a mile a minute and talk about Jesus or help the president. I went all in for the president when I met him. I didn't. I don't. Once I believe in some, I don't back down. I just go all in. I saw. I saw you uh, at uh, a couple of his rallies behind him, and uh, it's just great. He points you out, gives you the thumbs up. <laughs> you give him the wave, and it's like the president is acknowledging the my pillow guy. I know it's, it's incredible. Just like like yeah, it's <laughs> the first it's, thing you see when you Google him is you shaking hands with the president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first thing you guys. see. When I was invited in the White House, you know, I met him before he was president, and it was a divine appointment. Here's this crack addict, ex-crack addict from Minnesota, and he reached out to me. He said, Mike, this is Donald Trump. Would you meet me, meet me at Trump Tower in New York City? And I, and uh, this was in the summer of 16, August 15, 2016. They said, you're never going to get a private meeting with them. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, whatever you do, don't tell them about your crack cocaine and all this. And Well, it was a private meeting. I walked into his office. All by myself, he says, Mike, you always wear your cross. Are you a Christian? I said, yes, Mr. Trump, and this is a divine appointment. He started talking about the USA, the, his passion for the for a U.S., bringing jobs back. He said, passion for, uh, you know, my my uh, factory, what I'm doing. He, you know, he was intrigued by, uh, you know, keeping everything here. And we talked about the inner cities. But one of the first things I said to him is, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Trump, you know, I'm going to have a – I'm going to have this amazing platform to help addicts all around our country for the inner cities. I said, I used to be a crack cocaine addict. And he, you know, and he just, it just, you know, that just since then, I think it was because I was so real and just open. And, but I walked out of there and I said, wow, I didn't know anything about politics because I was a crack addict. I didn't know him <laughs> from a conservative. It was like coming out of a coma. And I come, but I come out of his office. I said, wow, this guy's going to be the best president in history. And I started talking to his employees and every one of them had a great things to say about just like my employees. I've never seen it. You can tell a lot about somebody about talking to their employees. And I went all in. Everyone said, you can't go all in. And I ended up at the White House at, where there was a manufacturer summit. I walked in and it's all surreal. I'm, I'm in there, but wow, I'm in the White House. You know, I never thought I'd end up here with, a, you know, with where I'd come from. And I go, who's sitting here? And they said, the president is. He wanted to sit by you. So here I am on national TV sitting next to the president and all my, yeah. all my ex-crack buddies are going, wow, <laughs> Jesus is real. There is no way Mike Lindell is sitting next in the White House next to the president. And uh, it's been quite a journey where... where um, it looks like there's... Know, coke everywhere yeah you know yeah. you know what it is uh uh mike you you're you're a genuine guy yeah it's good People that you love honesty and and you don't come off like a phony you you've made mistakes you you uh you you plow through them you, you, you get back up, you know, and, and, and people genuinely appreciate and respect that. And, uh, you know, that's what sets you apart from just a spokesman or anything. You have gone back uh, and, and helped uh, uh, the other addicts and whatnot. You, you haven't just forgotten right. about these people. You're very right. charitable. Yeah, and I'm in recovery, and that's an incredible thing that you're doing to do that, yeah, to help other people. Right. Two of these people... 
they're two of those addicts. They work for me now. They they buy uh, they buy. Uh, they're out of that. And uh, you know, I've got my amazing. Lindo Recovery Network. I'm coming out with now. It's going to be the, this most amazing platform in history where you t- you put the addict puts in their age and what they're addicted to. Let's say you're a 22 year old opiate addict. You might not relate to a 50 year old meth addict or a 60 year old ex crack addict, crack addict. But it, you know what? You can relate to a 22 year old opiate addict that's made it through. So I'm going to have it's all like Tinder for drugs. Yes. Yeah, all those. Yeah, exactly. You're it's a match. You're matching up you, you, these mentors where you see, hey, they, they made it through. It's hope. I give a lot of people. My story is a story of hope for the whole country of what you can be in America or in the USA to where you can where you come from to where you can be and for these addicts you know i give them hope but to give them hope on their level on exactly their drug mm-hmm. and exactly their age and that and then i have all these centers vetted that actually work and i'm going to have these online platform it's going to launch this fall and it's going to actually j- just j- destroy this addiction because yeah. you know what addiction affects everyone out there no matter how many forks you eat with <laughs> you true. you absolutely feel that there was a divine intervention in 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 you to to make you who you are now and, and give you the ability to to help people. You oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's why your that's why your faith based treatment centers have over eighty percent success versus less than twenty five for your secular centers. You need Jesus Christ. You need a rock, and I, you know I always wore my cross on TV, but I was always I always wanted that relationship, and I never. It, God was always chasing me. I've had fourteen near death experiences. I've had so <laughs> oh many things God. in in people's lives. If you look at, I fell asleep on a motorcycle, crashed it, going skydiving one day, and my parachute didn't only partially open i mean there was these all these things that uh if you if you read my book the prologue my i was getting my head cut off in mexico by a cartel on a family vacation i mean this is this Jeez. You know, in fairness so that's anybody who goes there now yeah yeah now that just is part of the package the all-inclusive <laughs> package is getting but your head you, cut off but you but you you take these things and here's i tell people out there look in your own lives in my book, is called, my book's called uh, What Are the Odds from Crack Addict to CEO? But one of the things in there, I would always do mathematics. And when you talk about divine appointments, if you go, wow, that was a one in a million. You go, wow, the odds of this happening was a one in a billion. Well, the odds of this happening could never have happened. And when you add them together, when, it does it, when it's unexplained, when does it become a miracle? Mm. I mean, for me... For me, ending up meeting the president, becoming friends, becoming friends, you know, I was went to a national prayer back because I was picked out of 12 people randomly to pray with Ben Carson in 2017 uh, when he was still running for president. And, uh, you know, now we're best friends. I mean, I mean it's just things like this happened. I'm going, this can't happen. I, I Who am I? I'm just some random guy from Minnesota, some ex-crack addict. And, and all of a sudden I'm put in these positions where it's a, like, you know, my platform now, even to, be, you know, to get behind the president, I, I know where he's, I know where he's going. I know what he's done. He's made his promises and people say to me, they can't change me now on TV. All the, all the things they go, I can go on TV now and they can, you know, they hammered me hard when I went in all in for him yeah. and the better, better business bureau went, gave me, took me from an A plus to an F. For no reason other than I, you know, went all in for the president. But I survived that? those big attacks, and now I go on TV. You guys will love this. They'll go boycott somebody. Somebody on one of the cable stations will do something. They'll go boycott my pillow. Boycott my pillow. And then the bots and trolls on Twitter will go, don't boycott him. We see, uh, we he'll double his ads, and we see enough of that jerk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I have fun, and I have fun with the news media out there. All all the big uh, papers that are so corrupt, and the and the me- and the news yep. media that's out there, they have my direct number. They call me, and I will just I'll go on and on, and they say all these good things. So they go, oh, I wish I wish I would have never called him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't you you can't be intimidated. You know who you are. You know the truth, uh, especially about yourself. It, it's an amazing story. Uh, oh, do you have? I, I I actually dressed up as you for Halloween last year, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, last. And year. we have a cardboard cutout of you and, permanently in our studio. Uh, we're, we're, we're which just is giant right fans. here. 
I got to tell you, because it's such a great Brandon. story. You probably could have had these pillows made overseas for cheaper or this, but you kept jobs in America. You, you and, and as far as uh, Trump is concerned, there's a guy that just wants the government to stay out of your business and yeah. give you the ability to become successful b by your own innovations and, and your own motivation. And, right. and you've done that. And that's all we ask for as Americans is let us just do what we do best without getting in the way. Absolutely. And he's the most pragmatic, common sense president in history. I mean, I tell they call me all, you know, this last week, you know, the narrative since the Russian narrative is gone. Yeah. Well, let's talk about racism and recession. Well, racism, he's as far from a racist of any oh, person please. I've ever met in history. And let me tell you about the recession. All these uh, outlets called me. I won't name them. We all know who they are. Uh, there's a big paper in New York. Uh, so they call me up and they go, yeah, we want it was the New York Times. They go, yeah, Mike, um, could you we'd like you to give a comment comment here on the recession, um, you know, you know the, that the, Donald Trump thinks it's just all made up, that they're they're trying to destroy, you know, it's a political thing. I said, of course it is. I said, we are in the most amazing times in history. I have, you have people out there now, the consumer confidence at an all time high. Everybody's employed now, lowest unemployment in history across the board from blacks to Hispanics, everybody to women. Well, now get this. Right now, entrepreneurs like me can go out and take chances in service business, in products, to take chances. And they have a safety net because they can have a good job they can go back to. Right. And to try and wreck this by some narrative is shameful. You know, look around. People, you're out there, businesses. I want to say it straight to anybody out there that's an entrepreneur or a business. I'll tell you what, these risks, there's not going to be a recession and we're in the best of times and don't live in fear. Too many people live in fear. Oh, what's this? Just enjoy it. We're in great times. And you know what? We're going to get past this division too. When people, I always say, everybody loves our president. Some just don't know it yet. <laughs> I, I've been saying for a while, we're going to look back. History is going to show this as a very prosperous time for the United yeah. States. And, and I think there's so much of this just lying going on in the media and, and a lot of brainwashing going on. And, but I think in years to come, when we, we are able to look back on this, we're going to say, wow, it was a really prosperous time for this country. And and you're right. It does give opportunity to a lot of entrepreneurs and, and innovators and, and people that have been the backbone of America, uh, America for so long gives them the opportunity to do what we're supposed to do here, which is Absolutely. be the, the, the leader, a leader in this world. And uh, I think Trump, man, he came by at the perfect time because we were we November, were heading for disaster. On November 8th. 2016, God gave us grace for such a time as this. And you know what? It saved our country and it saved souls. And I mean that with every part. We are, we took, you, we were going down a path, taking God out of the schools, taking, you know, in God we trust. You know, if you're taking all these things out and now all we need to do now is keep getting people. If you shut off, just imagine a time here. If you had no media out there, like it was, you know, 40 years ago where you just had, you didn't have this national cable, this narratives and these national papers that are that are you know if you go back 50 60 years before them and it, it just everybody's around going wow these are really good and then if you, <laughs> anybody i ask on the street they'll come up to me and they'll go even if it's protesters i was just out in california for an event and they come up to me and they go mike i love what you're doing but what's wrong with your brain you know and uh, you know that you're you know that and i'm going and i say to them i go you guys what's so wrong with where you're at you know what's going on and they don't have an answer and i'll say i met the guy this is amazing they did a skit on uh i'm not going to say what it is because it gives them legs but it's a it's a show on a uh showtime and i'm one of the characters and they got all the democrats are in a room and they're going what are we going to do with mike lindell and the other one goes didn't you hear? He wrote. He ruined half of his brain when he was on crack. So oh, now God. he has. Now he has no realization of any self doubt. Okay. <laughs> what? That's not bad. That is pretty good. That's hey, uh, by the way, there's there's my, there's a picture. I don't know if uh, you could see it if we pop it up uh, full screen. Oh it, yeah, there, there it is. The picture of me. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Big ball. 
already and raring good. to go. I, uh, you're looking yeah. good. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. That's what I was doing. I was going around all night going, I knew you would. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> Mike, you're great. You're such a, a great success story and an inspiration. So good talking to you. Uh, of course, uh, the book. Where's 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 the book? Oh my goodness! Oh wait, your oh your recovery network okay launches in a couple months. Of course, you got my pillow. Uh, yeah, look at that. That's that picture. There's that picture. Yeah, there it is. What yeah. are the odds from crack addict to CEO Mike Lindell? Uh, just a great inspirational story. Thanks so much, Mike. If you're ever in New York, we'd love to have you uh, pop in. Absolutely. I, I sure will. I'd love to be there, guys. And thanks for having me on. God bless y'all. Thank you. Thank Take you. care now. There he goes, Mike Lindell. It's wow. The guy.